This is in reference to Dr. Paul Krugman's article in the New York Times, Friday, uh, February 13th, 2015, Money Make Crazy. Now, the basic premise of what's going on here, and again, I applaud Dr. Krugman for bringing up the fact that even though we're going to have an, an election that's coming up and that there's going to be a lot of issues that are going to be brought about it, the Republican position in terms of what pol monetary policy should be is just absolutely not as, as a nutcase. Uh, or should I say fiscal policy, monetary policy. So, so uh, let's just say that um, whoever the party nominates is going to have to fall in line with what the current party's philosophy is in terms of what monetary policy should be. And of course, Dr. Krugman aptly points out, it is crazy, and it has been crazy for quite some time. And all the people that are saying all the crazy things, they're not being held accountable for it. The press really isn't getting on them. No one's really paying attention to them. And it's really, really nutty, nutty stuff. Now, let's just say the first thing, since the Great Recession started at the end of 2008, the early 2009, uh, actually, at beginning at the end of 2007 through 2008 and 2009, uh, is the fact that um, not only do we lose, lose millions of jobs starting in the Bush administration in early 2008, of course, the, the seeds of that were going in 2007, and it continued all the way through the first couple months of the Obama administration. And um, at that point in time, uh, let's say the early 2009, the Republican Party has been a very, very strong advocate, you know, of uh, that we need to be very careful about our monetary policy. The Fed shouldn't be doing what they're doing, because if they keep doing what they're doing, we're going to have currency debasement, we're going to have inflation, we're going to have higher interest rates, and all the stuff, that, and all this crazy stuff that, that would happen after all of that, you know. So, but here's the thing. 2015, 2009. Have we had any interest rate increases? No, we haven't. You know, ha have we had uh, in uh, uh, um, inflation? Has that shown its ugly head in any way, shape, or form? No, none of those things have happened. You know, uh, but we keep they keep saying those things. Now, Dr. Krugman brings in two people who have done it consistently, haven't been held to account for it, and we try and well, one of them we think is a little loony now and then, but the other one we we sort of. We, meaning that the press and other people, sort of hold up as some some uh, big thinker in the Republican Party, and basically he's a scam artist. Now, in 2009, they said all this stuff. In 2010, uh, quite a few of them sent a letter to Ben Bernanke about that, what I just talked about, currency debasement and inflation. And the thing is, you know, none of this happened. Paul Rand has been going after this since 2009. Paul Ryan has been going after this since 2010. They, they don't have an answer for it. They just say that we got to stop doing this because we're going to have inflation. We're going to have currency debasement. We're going to have higher interest rates. And none of that has happened. You know, we've had a very, very slow, steady, progressive growth in employment. That hasn't been, uh, uh, um, that hasn't been replicated the same way in terms of wages. I would like to see that go much, much, that wages would, would come up with that. That hasn't happened, or it hasn't happened to the extent that people actually feel comfortable enough to say that we're really out of this great recession. They still are uncomfortable because money is still tight, because the average working person hasn't had a lot of money. And of course, the, the people who are wrong about this all the time have been held ba are holding back what progressives want to do, which is invest more money. Because right now, we can borrow, inter we can borrow money at the lowest interest rates possible, and therefore, we're going to get much more bang for our buck if we can invest in, you know, infrastructure, roads, bridges, highways, tunnels, you know, NASA, uh, NOAA, uh, uh, Department of Agriculture, the SEC, the Consumer Protection Board, all of those types of things. Now, here's the other thing. You know, Paul Ryan, he's supposedly a big thinker. He bases a lot of his thinkings off a speech of a fictional character in an Ayn Rand novel. Ayn Rand novel, Ayn Rand died in, uh, was it 2000, uh, 2000, uh, 2000, excuse me, 1982, all right? She came here to the United States in 1927, so she was here for like 60 years. She wrote a couple books, and she's some type of, some type of guru. She never held an elective, an elective office. <laughs> She never had to be accountable for anything. Uh, she was really much, you know, she was against organized religion. She was for abortion. So, you know, all these, all these guys on the right, 
you know, they're lockstep behind her in terms of her monetary thought, her monetary thesis, her monetary, well, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's part of it's part of a book that was just fiction, that she, about what what she would like life to be like, and they're following in it lockstep and barrel. And but part of this is also the fact that that book made a very very clear distinction in terms of who were the takers and who were the makers or the moochers or whatever uh, that she called it. I never bothered to read the book. Uh, I was too busy drinking, flunking out of college. So when all those people talked about the great things they read, I wasn't reading that stuff. I did read Moby Dick. I uh, did read a lot of Shakespeare. But, so, <clears throat> uh, Paul Ryan is following someone who, who, whose, whose theories really have never been tested. Maybe they've been tested by Reagan since Reagan, and look at the fiasco that whole thing has been. But, again, the, 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 the narrative of this whole thing is that Paul Ryan, uh, 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 Rand Paul, did I say Paul Rand? What? <laughs> Rand Paul, uh, is that their worldview, their grand plan for living, is based on that makers and takers philosophy. And that the makers, who Rand Paul feels he is, that Paul Ryan feels that he is, even though he did get Social Security after his father died when he was 16 to help him through college. I don't know all of the details of all of that. But, you know, he does want to give that back to the next generation. He might have the same thing happen to them. Uh, but their, their, their moral philosophy of that maker and taker thing is that as the maker, they should be able to dictate to the taker that they're taking, and that this is the steps that, you know, you need to have structure. You need to have discipline. These are all good things, of course. But how, even if you have structure and discipline, there's no jobs available, how are they going to be able to pay for the things that they would like to pay for? If a woman has two two kids and is trying to work and go to school and is making seven seventy five an hour, working minimum wage at a laundromat, you know, how is she going to be able to get ahead if she can't even feed her kids? But, you know, but that's their philosophy. That's their worldview. That's that's how they want to play the game. They always want to look at down, down at poor people. They always want to tell them that they're, they're, they're morally uh, uh, insuperior. <laughs> that's not even a word. <laughs> you know, they're you know, morally much worse off than they are. And if they would bring their morals up, if they <laughs> bring their structure up, bring their discipline up, and do the things that they did. Buckle up your little old bootstrap over here and, you know, walk the fine line, work three jobs, you know, all of this kind of stuff, you know, that everything would be great. Even though none of these people never ever did that, you know, uh, or hardly ever did that. A couple of them did. But most of them didn't. Most of them grew up in a middle class or greater middle class, meaning the Republicans now, as we see them today. Most of them grew up in middle class, uh, upper middle class. You know, they had, hey, they had a lot of things given to them. They had white privilege, just like Billy says that they didn't have, but they did, because I know what it is, and you know what it is. And But again, this just bring out this basic point, and that is their grand plan for living, living, their moral philosophy is that they are morally superior to you and that they have a right and a duty to tell you what you need to do to get up and get yourself going in life and that it you know if you work hard enough you will be successful you know doesn't make any difference that there aren't any jobs does make any difference that there's no uh, in, there, 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 there's no uh, uh, um, stimulus to help get jobs when there's no jobs out there because remember right now uh, there's a couple trillion dollars that companies have overseas they have a couple tr trillion dollars in their banks uh, these are all big corporations and why are they not investing in more plants or anything like that because they don't have the fucking uh, 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 people who will buy the stuff. And why don't they have the people to buy the stuff? Because the people that have buy this, want to buy the stuff don't have enough money because the minimum wage is so low. So it's a bigger long circle. But again, money make crazy? Yeah. And this is going to be the philosophy for 2016. They'll bring up a lot of other stuff, but that part, that part will never change on their part.